tell me first, uh, c- could you explain to me how, where did you meet uh, Tender Loud, the circumstances about that? Uh, we were uh, we were doing a show in um, in Copenhagen at um, I can't remember that place. What's it called? Loppen. Loppen. That was it. Yeah, and uh, we ended up uh, a friend of mine who I used to live with in London is friends with uh, with, with the band, and uh, we got chatting about you know a few different things, and they really liked the sound of the Willard Grant record. And me and a friend of mine, Nick Hunt, mixed that record in in London. We did it really quite low budget, uh, just on a laptop. So it was kind of, um, I just thought it was uh, interesting to work with other bands and see see what was going on. Um, so uh, they sent us the demo, and then we just went from there, and it worked out really well. So could you explain to me what what the, is it with the sound from Turn Loud that fascinates you? Uh, I just thought there was quite a cross section of things going on that was quite interesting. It wasn't just one kind of music, and um, I've recently got into like a, a few different things, and it was uh, it kind of reminded me of a lot of um, older bands, um, kind of Green on Red. I don't know if you remember Green on Red. It kind of had a little bit of that edge, and tonight when. Uh, when I saw them again for the first time live, it kind of um, it reminded me. Uh, what was that band? Uh, I mentioned it to the violin player who ended up playing on the record. Um, it kind of had some elements of a lot of like great bands I thought from like the 60s. You know that, that kind of. It, they, they really would play well together, and it's got a great feel. You know. Um, Sorry, I'm stuck for words with uh, who I was actually saying it's, it reminded me of. Um, they don't really remind me specifically of anybody, but the elements that they've that they've got together, I think, is really interesting. So it kind of that that drew me in. You know, it wasn't like there was there was one particular band that reminded me of. So I quite like that because I don't like working with a band who try and emulate one kind of genre of music, you know, and there was, there was a lot of different things going that I thought was uh, was quite interesting to work with, you know, so that was what kind of initially drew me, uh, drew me in. Okay, yeah, and I know that um, Robert Fisher from, um, <laughs> now I'm out of it, from <laughs> with a grand conspiracy was... Um, after the thing of putting labels and music tonight uh, with Americana and uh, all country, but could you try and uh, what kind of labels would you put on Tender Loud? Uh, what mix of uh, genres is it? Well, I, um, I, I did say t- to them to, to maybe consider sending some stuff to Glitterhouse or Fargo in France that I think they've got quite a good cross section of music, but they still kind of concentrate on on a on a kind of old country, you know, genre, you know, genre. Because it's very um, interesting to. Uh, I don't think a lot of major labels have really caught on to kind of how big the the actual old country scene, as it as it were, is. I, mean, I, I don't think it's as big as people like Kylie Minogue or you know you know those kind of big pop pop idly type bands. But who cares? You know, it's kind of it's not to me. I've never been really that interested in that kind of music. So it's, uh, it doesn't really you, you can't listen to it. Um, you know, well, I mean, it's got a certain kind of element that is kind of quite. Funny, I think that you know those kind of pop bands, but I don't think the longevity really lasts um, in a in a kind of a heartfelt way. You know, it's more it's more like a merchandising and a, a whole like glamour thing. And I think music like Tender Loud and Will of Grand Conspiracy and a lot of great bands, Teenage Fan Club, um, have got. Uh, like real lasting songs that you could listen to 10 years down the line and still kind of get a, a bit of feeling from, which is I think is really important to promote. You know. mm. And so you received uh, studio recordings, and um, what what did you do to to those recordings? 
Well, when I initially I heard them, I thought the mixes were quite good, but um, I just felt that they were they were a little bit cluttered. You know, that everything sounded like as if it was in the same frequency. It was kind of probably very good for radio because if you've got a, if you've squashed the sound when it comes out of radio, it sounds really good because it's just all there. But the um, I kind of like a bit more of a panoramic sound, a bit more of a, 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 a kind of cinematic sound, which is what we try to create with that, you know, kind of like a C.O.G. Leon film, you know, kind of like en Ennio Morricone kind of vibe to it, which I thought really the music lends itself to, you know, so I could imagine this kind of thing on on TV, you know, and on films and stuff. But, uh, depends what they want to do with it, really. And I know you had to, you added a few instruments too, can you? Yeah, uh, well, Josh uh, from Willard Grant, Josh, Josh Hillman, he uh, added some, some violin. And I'm, I'm quite of the um, belief of doing things quite raw. I, I quite like the raw sound of things. So we, we just recorded it in my, uh, my front room. In the uh, in my in my house at at home in London, and uh, we just used like mics that were kind of lying around, and you know just got as good a sound as we could. And I think to some degree you can kind of spoil recordings by going into a, a real like flash studio and using the best mics on everything, because it kind of makes everything very clinical. So um, we we recorded Josh's violin just very very in the room, you know, just got the room sound. And um, then I just did a, a little bit of harmonica on a few tracks. And I, my dad came round at one point, and he's a great harmonica player. And he was like, listen to something. And I said, do you want to come and play on this? And he was like, yeah, yeah, great. So he did a little bit, you know, and then he had to go off. So it was good, you know, it's kind of quite a, a family oriented thing, you know. It's quite, um, I come from quite a musical family, so it's it, it kind of. I just try and pull people I know in to do things. If I'm working on something, I'll get people to collaborate, you know, so. I mean, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the the, which uh, they use that kind of sound quite a lot, you know, with the, the overdriven vocals and stuff. And uh, the guy I, I, I do a lot of production work with and a lot of mixing, uh, he worked on some of the uh, the, the records. Uh, and so he knows all the, the little tricks to get those kind of sounds, but they'd actually recorded them like that anyway, so it was, it was quite interesting to to get that, you know, that, that whole thing right, you know, from, from, from the recording, so we didn't have to do a lot of work to get to, to work on those kind of sounds. Well, I... I um, I did speak to Glitterhouse when, when we were in Germany and they, they said that they had a few bands that were very similar in, in certain vein, in certain, with certain respects. And uh, I, um, I think it's, it's just finding the right person and the right people to do it, you know, and it's kind of, I wouldn't give up just because the, the, the person that you actually wanted to do it wasn't totally interested you know it's kind of the Beatles got turned down by a major record company with you know one of their first records you know and it's like um, so I don't think it's anything to be disheartened by I think it's just finding the right people to, to do it and after seeing the show tonight I think they've got a great presence and it really sounds pretty near the record you know which is good because I don't think you want to go and see a band or listen to a band and then go and see them and them not be as good as the record. And I thought tonight seeing them was... It, it had the the the, um, the album songs and the sound, but it had a little bit more edge and, you know, I, I, I like that, you know, if, if a band can reproduce it and make it sound better. So I don't think they'll have a problem. I think they've just got to go out there and do it, you know, and then take it from there, really. Um, I would say keep doing what you're doing and you'll get there. You know, you'll get what you want. You know, don't 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 be disheartened by people because you've got to be very hard nosed in this business to get anywhere and there's a lot of bands out there. But you've just got to keep going and doing doing it and if you if you if you do do that, 
some, you know, time will make it come, come, you know, your dreams come out of that, you know. So, I uh, after seeing them tonight, I mean, I, I haven't seen a band like that for a long time, but I've quite thought, wow, that's they're great, you know. So, um, rock on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.